Hi guys, I'm Damian Krychowski and I would like to welcome you to the fourth part of SQL course for the beginners. Today we are going to change the topic a little bit and we will start to learn about SQL updates. But before that, let me introduce SQL Sandbox to all of those who are here for the first time. SQL Sandbox is our e-learning platform which allows you to work with SQL without effort. You will find the link in the description and after you log in you should see what I have right now in my screen what you need to do before we start all the exercises. We need to scroll down to the exercises set sections. We need to expand the first one, so the basic select section. Let's expand it and let's click prepare database button. Let's confirm the operation and right now our database should be ready for all of the updates we are going to learn today. What happened actually? Behind the scenes, the prepare database button has created a customer's table in our database and it has filled it in with 100 rows, which we are going to use today. Okay, when that is ready, we can scroll up, we can open a database and we should see SQL Editor. SQL Editor has a couple of elements, but the, but the most important one is Workspace. This is the place where we are going to put all our SQLs in. On the left side, we see a toolbox and it has list of tables. Right now it has only one table, customers table. When we expand it, we see it columns and we also see that there are 100 rows inside the table. Okay, let's start. First, we are going to use the basic select statement to get all the data from the table so that we can see what's inside there. So let's start. Select asterisk from customers. This is the very basic select. We now highlight it and let's execute it. And we should see a table with 100 rows inside. I will mm, increase the items per page number to 50. So we see more of them at once. And we see that there are customers and each customer has its first name, last name, email, country, date joint, total orders, and also customer ID, which is a primary key of the table. And it basically allows us to identify uniquely each row. We are going to use it in the update statements. Okay, so what updates are really for? Updates allows us to modify the values inside the columns for the selected rows. So maybe let's start with the very uh, basic one. Let's try to update first name of John. How to do it? We need to move to the new line in the editor. And remember, when you're working with the updates, you need to be extremely careful because uh, it's very easy to update things you wouldn't like to update. For example, you can update all of the rows in the table and destroy all the data you have and that's basically not a very good idea. But let's say that that happened to you and how can you actually uh, start again and work from scratch in our course? It's very easy. The only thing you need to do is to go back to the exercises. You need to scroll down to the exercises sets and find this prepare button which we have used uh, a moment ago. Prepare database again confirm it, and that operation will recreate the initial state of a database for you. So in case you have broken something, you can always go back here, prepare database, scroll up and go back to your database again, no problem. So again, quickly, select asterisk from customers. Let's execute it and let's move on to the updates. Okay, so new line and we start with update and now we type in the name of a table we want to change. So this is customers. Now set, this is a keyword which then we will use to specify the new values for the list of columns we want to modify. But we will start with one column only and that will be first name. So we type in the name of the column, first name, equal. This operation basically assign a new value to first name column. So we just now need to specify what value we want to put there. And let's say that we want to rename John to John1. So we open uh, quotes because John first name is string and this is achieved with quotes in SQL. And we type in a new value we want to use for first name to be set. Okay. And 
the very important part right now, we need to make sure that we specify where conditions, the same as we have specified them for select, but here it's much more important because when we will execute select without where, we will just get all the data. It can be time consuming if the data set is big, but it won't be destructive. But in case we would run update set first name John one without any where clause after it, we would basically modify all the records inside the tables and there is no way for us to undo that operation. Of course, uh, unless we go back to the exercises set and recreate the whole database from scratch. But that's something which you can do only here and you probably cannot do it on your production database unless you have some backups. So be careful with, with the updates. Okay, so how can we specify this where clause to pick John and to update only the first row? There are obviously many conditions which we could use to, uh, to find this particular row, but the best idea is always to use pre primary keys for the updates operations. They are designed exactly for that. They allow us to identify uh, records. They are the identity of those records. So we should use them to pick the records we want to update. And in here for John, uh, the solution would be to, set, to filter for customer ID equal to one. Okay, let's go, let's go through all the query again and let's try to analyze it and explain how it works. So update customers, it means that we want to update data inside customer tables, set first name to John one, it will change the column first name and set a new value, which is equal to John one. For those rows, which customer ID is equal to one. And there is only one row like that. This is this one. So we should see after running this query that the first row, first name has been changed to John one. Okay, let's try to do it. Let's highlight the query. Let's execute it. We see that we got a message that SQL query executed successfully. We don't see any table right now because update operation does not return any values. To get the values and to actually check if the query has run successfully, we can simply run our select statement again. So let's highlight it. Let's execute selection. And we see that query actually worked. We have first name of the first row changed to John one. So everything looks good so far. What else can we do? We obviously can modify more than one column and more than one row at the same time. So maybe let's try something more complicated right now. Okay, so what's the goal? We would like to modify first name and last name, and maybe let's append this number one to the end of those values for the next three rows in our table. How to achieve that? Okay, let's move to our uh, workspace. Let's go to the new line. And right now we will format our SQL a little bit nicely. So we are going to use some new lines in here. Let's start with update. Update customers. So we want to update customers table. Now new line. Set uh, first name. Okay. And what can we use in here? Because for John one, it was easy. We have just specified the new value and it was set. If we want to update more than one record, the situation is a little bit more difficult. We cannot say that first name should be Jane one because if we will run this query for three records, it will affect Ahmed and Lucas and it will change it to Jane one as well. So this is not a good idea. But we can achieve the desired result a little bit differently because in the update statement, we can get the current values of the columns. It's very easy. The current value is actually hidden behind the name of the column. So it may look a little bit strange that we are going to use equal for the first name on the left side and first name on the right side. But this equal, as I said, in that context of setting a column in the update statement, it's not for comparing value, but it's rather for assigning a new value. So it means assign to the column first name F original value of the first name and now we are going to use the concatenation operator which is those two uh, vertical lines and a new string we want to append to the current value of the first name so space and one 
And how it works? Let's go through it again. So equal is assignment and we want update customers table and set first name to be equal to be assigned a first name, a original value of a first name with appended one at the end. Okay, so that's for the first name and let's do the same for the last name. So last name should be assigned a new value which consists of original value of last name plus space one. So that operation will change the first name and last name and it will sim simply take the original value and it will append space one at the end of those values. And now the most important fact, uh, part because we don't want to modify all the records in the database so we want to use this where query. So where and we need to specify those three rows. And again, there are multiple ways to achieve it, but the cleanest one, in my opinion, is to use in operator, which will go like that. Customer ID, in, and now we open brackets and we specify a list of IDs we want to be, uh, records uh, for records we want to be modified. So it will be two, comma, three, comma, four. So to go through the query again, update customers table, set the first name to be equal first name plus one, last name to be equal last name plus one, for customers uh, which IDs are two or three or four. Okay, let's try to run it and let's see if that worked. So let's highlight it, let's execute the selection. Okay, SQL query executed successfully. And to confirm it, as always, we are going to execute select again. So we highlight select, we execute it, and we see that update actually worked. So, very good. Jane 1, Smith 1, Ahmed 1, Khan 1, Lucas 1, Brown 1. So, it, it's good. But what would happen if we would run this update again? So, I think that it should be clear right now that we will see two ones in those values. Because right now the original first name already have a one inside. So we would have Jane one plus one at the end. And let's maybe confirm the theory. Let's highlight it again, execute again, select uh, customers again, and we see that those ones are now duplicated. Because update statement basically updates and then the new value is used for the next update so those operations combine with each other. That's something which you should remember because selects do not work this way. Selects don't modify anything so you can execute select over and over again and the results will always be the same. But updates, each time they can set the values to different, to different values. Yeah, okay. So what else can we do? We can obviously modify all the rows in the table. This is very risky operation, so maybe do not try it on any production databases, but in here you can play as much as you like. So let's try to modify all the rows with one query. So let's say that our goal right now is to modify the email value for each customer to be parsed in some new format. So maybe we would like to have emails, which is built in a way that we have first name plus dot plus last name and then a new company domain. So let's try to build something like that. We start as usual, so update customers and now set email because email is the column we want to modify. Now uh, assign operator and let's try to build this new email. So first name, uh, concatenation, sorry, concatenation and dot, concatenation and last name. So take first name plus dot plus last name and maybe plus dot com, company dot com. And let's try to run it. And as we right now don't want to modify some specific rows, but every single row in our table, we don't need this where uh, condition. We can just highlight that, execute it, 
and select again from the customers table and we see that it looks like it worked. So let's expand the number of the, of the items per page and we see that probably the fact that we have changed the first name and last name for those forced record, forged records to include spaces inside it would require some intervention in here because these emails doesn't look, look right. However, they are in the format we desired, so that's good. We could use some updates to modify them individually, and maybe you could try to do it on your own to fix those spaces, get rid of them. But we see that for all of the other rows, the emails are looking quite nicely. So we have name, we have last name, company.com for every single row in our table. We can scroll down to confirm that and we can move to the next page and we see that operation has been applied correctly everywhere. And that's basically all for today. As always, I strongly encourage you to practice uh, because the more practice you have, the better you are going to be with SQL. If you do not have any ideas, what exercises could you do, what could you update, you can always go to our smart assistant and ask him to prepare 10 or 5 different exercises to use update queries. I strongly recommend that. And as always, see you next time and have a nice day. Bye bye.